Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to create a Grand Theft Auto style game in Unity and welcome to episode 21. In this tutorial we're going to focus on collisions specifically with our NPC as well as tidying up our hierarchy just a little bit. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and indeed everything else I upload to my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So up until now, we have our NPC that will walk across our road over here and he will come to this section here simply because we have the NPC 01 destination set right there. So the idea is we now need to deal with this object with another collision that tells our NPC to walk to another destination. So this is where some collision comes in. Also, for those of you who have been, you know, messing around, trialing things out, currently our NPC will walk straight through our player. So we need to sort that collision out as well. So I think we will, before we do anything, let's tidy up our hierarchy and get things in a little bit more of an order that we can understand. And to do that, we can actually add in just simple game objects and just give ourselves a bit more leeway of where things are. So if we go game object, create empty, uh, let's rename this and have it as dash 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 and I'm going to call it um, something useful like world mechanics dash 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 and I'm going to place this right at the very top and everything under here is going to have things like the, the light, uh, the camera, uh, sequence holder so we'll, we'll have all that there Let's duplicate that, hold control, press D, and let's bring that to here. And we'll rename this to be dash 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 um, NPC models and destinations. In fact, we'll just call it NPC and destinations. Keep it short. <laughs> okay. So after that, let's have another one, hold control, press D. And then let's place this uh, here. Uh, maybe a little bit. No, not in there. Let's have it there. Rename this. And let's just have this named as buildings. And let's keep everything under there. And I'm just going to do one more. You should probably take the time just to kind of tidy up a little bit more than me. I may do this off. Uh, on my own without a tutorial, but just keep it something like this. Um, UI elements. So I always like to tidy my hierarchy in this way because it gives me the opportunity to, you know, find things much easier. So I would take the time now and just uh, run with it. I'm actually going to bring my character down to the bottom here and create another one at some point. So I'm going to save that now. So, collisions, collisions, collisions. Collisions are always fantastic to work with, but they can be a little bit of a pain sometimes, depending on how we want to deal with it. So, what I think we're going to do first is we're going to deal with the collision that allows our NPC to walk elsewhere. And for the purposes of this tutorial, if I go to the destination object, when our NPC gets to here, I want him to cross the street. But the reason we want him to cross the street will become apparent when we apply more collisions later on in this tutorial. So for now, what we need to do is we need to be able to determine what is an NPC and what isn't an NPC. So to do that, we need to go to our NPC and we need to tag it. What I mean by that is set a tag here at the top of the inspector panel. It currently says untagged. If we drop down that list and click on add tag, click on plus and we can create a new tag name. So I'm going to call this NPC and click save. So that means that we've created a tag specifically for our NPC now. So if we go back to it and then drop down and click NPC. Tags are incredibly handy for detecting what an object is without creating too much code to uh, determine whatever it is. So that now means that we can use that specific tag to change something that would happen within our destination. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go to, which one should we go to? 
So let's go with, stay with characters. I'm going to right click, create, and go to um, and C Sharp script. Sorry. So we're going to do a couple of variations of this. The first one is going to be a static one. So we're going to tell the NPC where to go after that. So later on, we're able to use the same mechanics to create a random destination. But for now, because the city is not as complex as we would like, we don't really want to go down the route of being random just yet. But we can always get to that pretty soon, I would say. So I'm going to call this um, NPC Destination. We'll just call it NPC Destination because... That's what it is really, isn't it? So let's open that up in Visual Studio. Now, what we have to be mindful of when we're doing this is the actual location of where we want to allow our NPC to walk to. So we're going to have to determine whereabouts that is, at least in a static environment, as soon as the script is loaded and we can go back to Unity. And the script itself we're going to write here is actually very, very simple. So loaded up now so i'm going to go back to unity and i'm going to use the current destination of it and i'm going to actually turn it into an integer rather than the decimal that it is right now so i'm going to say 150 uh, 16 by 127 so that's relatively decent it's an acceptable destination so 150 16 127 that's the current placement of the destination we want to move it to here so let's make note of where that destination is when we bring it over here so we're only going to change on the um, x position and that's going to be 176 so we need to remember that just for now 176 16 127 so let's head to our script and we need to get rid of void update, void start, because we do not need them. We do need on trigger enter. So void on trigger enter. It will make it private. It doesn't need to be private, so that can go. However, in the parentheses, we have collider other. We do need that. Reason being is because whatever collides with it is basically defined as this variable here, which means that we can actually check what the tag is of that variable. Now you can change that word other if you want to, you can call it absolutely anything you want. For default sake, I'm gonna keep it labeled as other. So it now means that we need to go if, and in brackets, other dot tag equals, and that's double equals, remember, quotes NPC, open curly bracket, then we need to say this dot game object dot transform position. So transform dot position. And we're going to make it equal to a new vector three because obviously 3D environment. And now we say the X, Y, and Z coordinates. And we had that as, so the X was 176, the Y was 16 and the z was 127 127 so obviously it may not be the exact same in your world you just make sure your numbers here are relative to your world if you've copied me exactly to the t which is i think quite unlikely at that at this point uh, then your numbers would be, would be the same but you just need to be mindful your numbers are more likely going to be different to mine at this point close bracket semicolon and save. So now what we need to do is head back into Unity, let the script compile, which it has. Awesome. And now we need to attach that NPC destination script to that destination. So drag and drop onto there. And now over here on the box collider section of that destination cube, we need to tick is trigger. So all this will do is will, it will allow the NPC to walk into this cube and it will say, yep, that's right, this is a trigger. So if we go to our NPC, we're actually going to need to add a rigid body to our NPC, otherwise this whole thing won't actually work. So add component, physics, and click on rigid body. I'm not going to worry about anything else at the moment. There's, there's no point in us worrying about any of this just for now. 
we only need the rigid body at this point for this whole process to work. So if I press play now, let the game go through the motions that we have in place two years later, blah, 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 blah. We'll see our NPC walk past us in just a moment. And hopefully, I'm hoping he will walk straight through us because that is the whole intention right now. I want him to walk through us. There we go. I think he did kind of walk through us. See, we can walk through him. So that is the next collision we need to fix. However, I want to prove now at this point that we can walk through this trigger without changing the destination. The NPC is the only one that can trigger this now because we've set it only him. So he will come here and then he's going to start walking over this way. Well, he should do, but he hasn't. Why haven't you done that? Let's take a look at our destination in scene view. So it's still play in here. That's fine. Uh, NPC, I believe it's because we have not ticked convex. We may need to add, tell what we'll do. Just to make sure this all works for completeness, I'm actually going to remove the mesh collider. I'm not a massive fan of mesh colliders. Uh, they can be a little bit system greedy. Uh, so I'm going to attach just a, a standard box collider to him. So let's go over to him and just change everything that we need to. Um, center is going to be two. Size is going to be maybe 3.3. .3. Bring the center down just a little bit. So 1.9. That should do. So we have the box collider all around him. We have rigid body, so everything should actually work as intended now. I think that was the main reason why it wouldn't work, but I think we just need to be mindful that our NPC does need to have a collider and he does need to have a rigid body. Now, we should be able to see this work as intended now. Fingers crossed. This is the problem with collisions. It can be a little bit daunting to kind of get the collision working as intended. It's not sometimes it can be just an absolute nightmare, but it's something you get used to in the end. And once you got it down to a T, you won't really have any more problems. There. Oh. Okay. Okay, so that's something I didn't expect to happen. That is something I didn't expect to happen. Not quite sure what he's doing there. So he should come to here, and there he goes across. Now that is that is bizarre. Okay, so I am going to check why this is happening. Okay, so he has gone to the destination, but I am very curious to see why that actually happened. So this is a great opportunity for us to see what exactly is going wrong with this particular setup. So in order to see what's going wrong with this particular setup, I am going to bring our NPC to here. I'm going to set the destination back uh, on with the mesh. And I'm going to press play and then take myself back into scene view to see what our, car our NPC will do. So he seems to be Okay, so we seem to be working just fine there, which is very odd indeed. I must say that is very, very odd. So let's quickly review what exactly is happening here, because ultimately our NPC is walking towards this destination no matter what. So if I bring him, let's bring him over here. And let's see if we can work out what exactly sends him round the bend. So let's press play again. Let's do this in a game view. And let's see if we can actually see if that was a one-off glitch. We get glitches in games all the time. Or whether it was something more. So our NPC is walking where he needs to go. He's well on his way. He is well on his way. So 
So he's just, I think he's just navigating the area, it seems. Okay, fair enough. So now we can't walk through our NPC. However, we can push him. I believe that is going to be because of the rigid body. Perfect. So that's quite interesting. So we can shove our NPC like that. Right. Yep. I am quite happy with how that has turned out. You may not be. However, I am. So we're going to play with a rigid body because I now know the problem is the rigid body itself. However, on that topic, we're actually going to go to our player and we're going to add a nav mesh obstacle component because we're going to bring everything now that we've just discovered all together. So if we go to our contract killer, go on add component and let's just type in nav you can see the second option, nav mesh obstacle. So if I turn our player on, turn the fake one off, zoom in, we should be able to see this large green box represents the nav mesh obstacle. So what that means is that on the nav mesh, whatever is an agent will avoid whatever is inside this green box. So if we set this as, oh, that's quite high, 0.52 it will avoid everything within this area around us. So let's decrease the size on the X and the Z just a little bit. So 0.8 and 0.8. And I'm going to save that now. Uh, our contract killer is completely fine. We can see the freeze rotation uh, on our player X and Z. So what would happen if we were to apply that X and Z and also tick is kinematic on our NPC. Let's see how this game now reacts with those changes. So theoretically, the NPC will actually avoid our player. He will walk around him because it's a non-static obstacle. However, we need to be sure that the crazy glitch is something that is now a one-off. And it does seem that way. So we've managed to fix the crazy glitch of our player. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let him... So now I'm going to just stand here and he should navigate around us. And he does. Perfect. So we have now... Maybe not mastered collisions, but we're well on our way to getting these collisions working as intended. I'm just going to turn the mesh renderer off on our destination. So we've resolved the bug that we have with a rigid body. We've resolved, it's not really a bug, but we've resolved the issue of being able to walk straight through uh, the player by the NPC. And we've also determined that the NPC can now go to another destination. So what we're going to do next tutorial is we're going to build upon that collision we've got for the NPC and we're going to create a certain path for him to walk all the way around the city. So what I think I'd like to do, uh, at least for now, is we'll make him constantly walk around this block infinitely. And that'll be the next stage in creating paths for NPCs. Uh, I think what we'll also do is maybe deal with another type of collision by where if we get too close to him, you know, kind of bump into him, he'll say, hey, watch it, or hello, or something like that. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.